Which brings me to where I do have heartburn, and that would be number <laughs> two there. Uh, and you know where I stand on this. I, I, I don't think that we should be a monopoly. I think, you know, the scenario that comes to mind right now is imagine if for some reason we can't keep a good quality of any of our schools. And one of the things that, that I never thought about until now is that kids would want to get out of the school if we can't keep the quality. However, kids from families that are, I'll call it advantaged or affluent, they will have the money to take their kids out of their school. And it's the economically disadvantaged kids that cannot. They, we don't let them have any mechanism that would allow them to take their kids out of that school and put them in, in any other school. One of the things, and I brought this in the past, last year when, when we went through this, I would not be in favor of taking vouchers and giving them to schools that don't, are not being held to the same criteria that we're being held to. So we're held to a certain criteria. If you want to have vouchers, if you want to take your money, the, the money that was, and, and it doesn't have to be 100%, and there are different formulas and different models for this, take it and take your kid to a school that does satisfy what you need. If we can't do that, I'm, I'm very confident that in PISD we will be able, we do have the right teachers and the right principals and everyone to keep the level of schools, but if we don't, we are causing a divide because kids with, from families with money will be able to take them out and kids from families without will not. I really don't want us to have, or, or at least to refine our position that says no vouchers unless it's for a school that is being held to the same standards that we are. Or if it's vouchers only for the schools that are not performing. Add that too. Add that I just, too. I, I don't know. I, I, my opinion is to leave it as it is. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I think my position on this is well known, at least amongst the seven of us board members as well. And this is where Gorm, you and I disagree probably the greatest on any issue. I, I don't at all want to open the door for vouchers. I think that taking state funds and putting them into private use, uh, A, I think is a violation of the Texas Constitution. Um, there's a Supreme Court case currently that will decide if the similar language in another state is constitutional or not under the U.S. Constitution. But beyond that, I think that taking public dollars and putting them into private private schooling is is not the proper use of, of those public funds. And so I I disagree, and I would, I would want to keep this as an absolute statement that we oppose vouchers in any form. The, the, here's where I'm coming from. I have to ask myself, do we represent the students who are currently in PISD or the students that can be in PISD? And I think that we represent the latter. We represent all students that can be in PISD, including those that can't find our schools or, or any of our schools, or can't find a program that they want to have, and there is another school that does provide that program. And we don't have any intention to offer a very specific program. Why not let them take them out? What, why hold them? I, there, there are financial mechanics mm -hmm. around that. And that is an additional cost to the entire system. So if children, so the, the, the deal that is being discussed now is not a voucher, it's an education savings grant. Mm -hmm. And there is no accountability and no transparency associated with that right now. So the mechanism that you're describing doesn't exist in that form. But the form it does exist in is called a charter school. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, any child has the ability to uh, opt in to attend a charter school and there is transparency and accountability for the use of public funds in those mechanisms. I represent Plano ISD. I don't represent other school districts. Um, and in, in Plano ISD, I believe that we have choices where students can transfer between schools if they so choose. They could go to a charter school and that is still a, a, a transparent use of, of public funds. For the children who are currently in private school, who you're describing now, there is no financial mechanism in the system today. We are not compensated for them. Mm -hmm. So um, if s such a system were to occur, then the value associated with that student isn't 
funded to us now, so that's an incremental cost to the entire system to now take a funding and give it to them and let them use it for whatever choice they have. Um, so that, that's a, a, a revenue, that's a whole additional cost to the system um, and there is not going to be, there isn't any transparency associated with that. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm in, in a different camp on this issue. No, that, and that's fine, I, but the, the fact that there is no system right now that, allow, that has the accountability and transparency. The charter schools do. Charter schools do. Okay, other than and charter schools. So yeah. if a child is in a private school and they want a different, or they're in a public school and they want a different choice, they have that ability to make such a choice. Um, they could even go to Grand Prairie where they have open enrollment mm -hmm. and, you know, take one of their choice programs. There, I believe there are choices. Um, is every choice under the sun available? Probably not. But there are options, and um, I'm, I'm just in a different My, my place. point is that instead of just having a blanket statement that says, we're going to oppose this period and, and then call it a mechanism to privatize pli uh, private education, how about if we define what are the boundaries of under which we're not going to oppose it? So I, I'm okay with the wording being, we're going to oppose it unless or we're going to oppose it if schools don't meet the same accountability and the same transparency requirements to the system. And, and if they don't, and if it does not, you brought a point of adding cost to the system, and if it does not add cost to the system. I just don't want it to be a blanket statement. Well, you're, you're asking to us talk. to negotiate <laughs> against ourselves. You what? But you're asking us to negotiate against ourselves because this board has a history of an absolute prohibition on vouchers. So if they're, what you're asking us to do is then say, well, we know you oppose vouchers and we had this conversation in the spring in a work session in that we, we, we oppose vouchers, except here's some ideas that maybe we'll be okay, comfortable with. Well, mm -hmm. we shouldn't be the ones proposing that. We're opposed to these vouchers. If somebody else wants to propose a system, that's fine, but I'm not gonna negotiate against myself and start throwing out ideas that would be acceptable to me to let somebody else cherry pick that and say, well, you said you would do this. A, B, I stand by this statement. I'm opposed to vouchers. I'm opposed to privatizing the public school system, period. I would just like to ask that if for some reason the <clears throat> it appears that's going to be passed um, by the state, I would like us to have some good um, talking points that we should have readily available and not just say we're opposed to this. I think we need to have um, a more meaningful dialogue, all the disadvantages that it um, can create with public ed. That's, you know, I, I'll, I'm opposed to it as what I know, as what I have been told by legislators when I ask them, you know, okay, you're going to do this, you're just going to throw taxpayers' money at whatever, and you're not going to ask for any accountability, I'm sorry. That, that is totally fiscally irresponsible, period, regardless if it's um, in line with the constitu constitutional or not. It is fiscally irresponsible to not have any accountability. So I, I agree with you. I agree with you. What I'm saying is, oh, we know you're let's... Saying. let's Let's say we will oppose it or we will not oppose it unless there is an accountability and transparency and, and no, no added costs or, or whatever we decide the boundary. Here is, here is what I'm afraid. At some point this is going to happen and if this is going to happen, it's going to happen and not at our terms. Not at, it might not have the accountability. We may be giving them, here is the way to do The way to do that is only if you enforce accountability and transparency, you held them to the same standards. But at that point, you let a kid that, that we cannot provide an option to get another option. Right now, I want to help them with, use our people to help them figure out a better financing, you know, a better way to finance public education. That's where I want to put all my eggs at this point. And I do, I understand what you're saying, Yorn, but I support um, this statement as it is for now. 
I appreciate your passion on this issue, but I don't think you're going to sway enough people to change it. I was going to say, call to question. <laughs> so, any other um, comments about six and seven? Uh, not for me. Okay. Not because I, <laughs> I decided not to. I just didn't have any of them. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, all in favor, please raise your hand. Would you clarify all in favor would be changes made to omit? Uh, thank you. Item three as four. as uh, all in favor of the presentation as modified. Okay. Thank you. Please raise your hand. All opposed? Motion passes.